Hello, in this video we're going to work on this photo of the model and uh, this is kind of like we will go do goth witchy, we'll see what is going on with this. Uh, let's go ahead, open in camera raw processing and uh, one thing to mention when we open inside the camera raw, my processing, okay, let me put this a little bit up. Okay, if we look right here, we click on the bottom to open our properties and I'm working with Adobe RGB workspace, color space. And this is usually, it's what I shoot in a camera and I'm doing in Photoshop. So if you prefer with sRGB or Profoto or any other ones, uh, just be sure I would recommend to keep it your same color space as you're using inside your camera. So it will be a little bit no offset on colors so that things happen. And I'm also working with 16-bit channel. In many cases, we may switch to 8 for faster processing, but I do like as a gradients does not have it um, fringing or other stuff going on there. So 16-bit work better for me. Okay, this is my settings um, in general. So let's go look right now on an image. Uh, first, we'll go analyze. And uh, you can notice after dress have a pity code, which is have three rings. We can see them probably uh, for the next shoots. I may add like six rings or whatever. So it will be a little bit smoother. So we'll need to remove some of the shadowing creating by those uh, pity code underskirts kind of things. Also hands over blowing there because the light's definitely closer. And with every foot, we'll have it what is to stop fallout. So we'll darker here. To do this actually recover, it's a little bit easy because we do have it all information available thanks to the raw photo shooting. And it's another thing to recommend for you. If you should be sure you photo shoot in a raw format because you can easily recover those highlights or shadows. For that, we'll go on highlights and we'll bring highlights down. Notice when I bring down highlights, we lose some of the face become a little bit more darker and flat, which is okay. We can easily cover that. But right now, my main concern is have this information right here in our highlights. So maybe a little bit too much. Just let's bring back. We always can take also a little bit flatten with shadows, bring shadows a little bit up. Be careful by using this um, slider because with highlights, it's work a little bit better, but with the shadows, I noticed when you put it too much, you will introduce digital noise. What I'm meaning by this, if you look on the darker area right here, we'll bring, you can see we have it start getting this grain and other stuff. So be careful. And of course, different cameras will work differently. For example, this is was shot on Canon um, R5 and uh, with the new processor and a sensor and it's work very good is actually produced very nice very clean result with the shadows um, definitely is different because before when i shot with a canon 5d mark 3 for example it was very much <laughs> noise in those so depending on your camera you can work with these uh, shadow highlights next what we want to do is take sharpening and bring a little bit up and usually i bring anywhere between 60 and 70 a little bit uh, to restore original sharpness and that again based on a camera you're using for example canon um most canons i think it was only a couple exam uh, exemptions they're using uh, anti palasking high filter so they actually reduce sharpness inside sometimes you have it up front of processors and that post processing doesn't matter how it's work but point is this you're losing sharpness some nikon don't have this um some versions of sony so be sure your camera uh, have or don't have it so in this case the sharpening is only to restore that original sharpness that was on an image by the way this image was shot with um how say r5 canon r5 and i was using 24 105 st uh, stock lens usually it's probably set about 50 millimeters um focal link uh, my aperture usually on this very big so it's maybe about 11 or 14 f11 and 14 i usually keep it i say between f8 and this a, a reason for this to do um, your best performance list and sharpness mostly will have it uh, anywhere between on a middle f stop this is probably the best and it's for most lenses will related to this beside that uh, when i photo shoot i want my background be sharp i want 
kind of a sharpness in all details. It's not necessarily a portrait when other ones is blur out. So for that, I want deepest and uh, depth of field need to be as wide as possible. So that is the reason why I can do this. And inside studio, it's not that hard to do. You just pop up more power to your lights. Uh, lights was using for this. It is a Powell C buff Link 800. So it's new powers, new lights. The very good, very nice working. It was no problem to do this. And uh, with the depth of field, I have a sharp image. And if I needed any time to add blur, I can easy to do this inside the Photoshop. However, if you have a blurry image, it's very, very, very hard to add sharpness back to the image because you don't have those details that you needed. So you need to create them somehow. Okay, right here, we'll go down the list. We have it now in a color mixer. And in Luminosity tab, you notice we have orange and yellow. This is where we're going to restore some of that uh, depth in our skin. So we just increase the luminosity on a skin tone. And you can see right here, it's kind of restoring a little bit. We can also add slowly to the yellow color, but be careful how you use it. And just FYI, uh, to understand the colors does not change shapes. The luminosity or what you want to contrast or black and white that is producing for us creating shape of the figure. The colors just give it additional information to this. What we're doing right here, we're working with luminosity, not color itself, but inten intensity, luminosity, how much light's passing through. So that has helped us to create the shapes. You always, if you have confusion on this, you can take saturation to the zero, have it black and white. And with the black and white, you can actually try to play around and see. But right here, you can notice it does not affecting because our saturations work with combinations on those sliders. So let's go ahead, put back to the zero. Okay, on this, our saturations, because um, if I need to add, it will be done in Photoshop, not in camera raw. We'll go down list. Chromatic abbreviation is check in, use the profile correction for lenses. And right here you can see it, it was 24 105 lens and profile apply correctly. Okay, so next we're going to do just click open. Some people prefer open a smart object, it's up to you. The reason is why I just open because if I need resize, I will switch to um, smart object. Usually I will work with native resolution, so this is, will be my resolution. And whatever changes or I need to apply, I will apply to another image as well. And if I need to go back to original for some reason, remember all those settings still save in my camera raw. So I just need to open that image. Just click open without changing anything. And I will come back to exactly the same image as this one. So in case if I need it. First, before we do this, let's go look on a framing. And I just want to kind of a look a little bit adjustments and mostly what I'm adjustments I'm looking how the eye will going so I'm separating it's nice to put it a little bit on an edge eye so it's a draw a little bit more reduce this area we do have it right here a little bit of soft box that we need to fix it remove it but general I think it's work okay on composition so when we're done I want to just be sure it's a delete crop pixel so I don't need it to hold them and we'll start by fixing our background. Here's the things. We have a black element at this time. Um, to fix this, let me just to create duplicate so I can show you background on copy. We can use it our patch tool. However, if we take select patch tool on a black and we say, okay, uh, probably somewhere around here should match. You'll notice it will come up sometimes a little bit darker. So right now it's actually working very well. But if you have problem with this, you want to actually take brush first, sample the color, what it's supposed to be like around here, go paint over this. Okay, let's go ahead a little bit brighter, just add similar color. So what we want to keep it, we want to keep it the same luminosity level. It's what important. Again, not so much on the coloring, but luminosity level, it's kind of more important. So we'll just paint over to create general things and next we can go create select area we want to replace it and just find something similar on the side so I'm going move right around here and I can see kind of work together don't worry if they don't match precisely you can always just select this area example like right uh, let's go you know a little bit closer to this one 
and we can match slightly this way so like around here maybe so you can play around and match whatever coming closer but overall it's give you idea um, I'm just leaving like this for now actually maybe this one just small 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 area it's like right there and don't worry to match about this angle uh, corner because mostly corners will be in shadow will add quite a bit elements and they will be hiding quite a bit well okay next what i want to do it is smooth uh retouching a little bit more on our image so let's go create new um i'll go fix background this one we'll call retouching and you know what as a retouching let's go change color for this um i'll put it red this color it's for the specific layer it's only optional it does not do absolutely nothing to functionality or anything but it does help you when you going to look over some elements and you says okay my um, dodge and burn purple color or this so you can see and identify very fast by the color what layer does it's no preset standard what color you should use it it's up to you your organizations or ad agency or what are you working for maybe have it done preset but general it is very subjective on the coloring okay so let's go ahead we have the retouching here and i'm going to use it healing brush the healing brush is different from the other healing brush because you need to specify what area you want to take texture if you're not familiar with the um, frequency separation then just think it's take what whatever the noise lower noise can put it if you're familiar with frequency separation think about this it is localized frequency separation so it will take texture from where you're selecting a low noise sorry high frequency noise will apply it and you'll changing just low noise so we're right here for example if i need to remove this i'll sample area close by so i will match and you can see it just very easy and fast removing so same like for example on her nose right there if you don't want earring there we'll just go ahead and sample area around click and right there we don't have it so again but this is will require from you click so if we have it on the edge that will have a little bit sometimes uh challenge all what you need to do is sample the another edge bring closer like right here click and there you go we remove it so you can see we can work with the edges usually her skin is actually look very nice and clean contact lenses look good maybe we want to touch up a little bit right here on the side but i think that this should be okay we could remove little bit of the hair just touch up slightly remove some single hairs but i think that still be look good okay here's what we become to analyze and we'll see these um wrinkles so to do same we'll go remove the wrinkles kind of select right there we'll go to retouch some of those wrinkles um wrinkles is very easy and fast retouching on the very complex object if you wanted by using again frequency separation techniques but in our case we don't have it that bad so we'll just go and kind of fixing very fast we'll apply also additional elements to this but this is preliminary kind of fix for the um our wrinkles so we can just go right there and this is um kind of nice deep one was but i think it still look too sharp for me so i'm a little bit replacing some of that and um, we always can keep it wrinkles sometimes only depend on what aesthetic you're going after but generally we can do this also you can see right here we have this ring going it's hard to see when we closer but we can also go and just move a little bit this ring out same right here we have a little bit ring let's go fix this ring off okay we have it a bit right there we can fix it small it's hard to see sometimes ring when you're closer so we need to move out and look on a far away and we'll just go fix like right there and apply it okay i think i maybe even actually leave some of those that look nicer right here we have some problems we'll just go 
remove those wrinkles, kind of ring. This is petticoat ring. Right there, look, does not look very good. So let's go click. And you notice what I'm doing. I click Alt or Option key on a Mac. I select sampler area, release, and start painting. So it will help me. Be sure you do this um, in right areas. Sometimes if you don't do it right, you maybe went to the side and it will look very funny. Kind of. So right here, we'll touch up a bit more on address. And I think this is already look better. This, I maybe don't like it. So let's go ahead, select and smooth out a little bit more on the bottom. So remove some of that ring look. And we're doing this with the lights. Uh, one, uh, also keep in mind that uh, what's going on right now, I'm just click here and I align. So as I'm moving my mouse, if I select there, align, it will go with aligning. You can just select single area and says, do not align with current below levels. And in this case, it will be just always take from one place. That is work very well if you want to replace partial skin or other one to do. So you can do that techniques as well. Okay, so we're done touching up on this. I think that is look okay. Right here we have a little bit problem. I think it's too messy, but we'll fix this with actually dust and scratches effect that we're going to use next. Okay, let's look overall. I think it's kind of look okay. So we'll look fine here. Let's go next. We'll do dust and scratches. For this, we we'll press Control Shift Alt E, Command Option Alt E on a Mac to take all visible layers, combine them together by creating brand new layer. After this, we'll just go ahead. Let's switch to the blue color again. That is all um, subjective. Uh, we'll go call this layer smoothing and we'll go to filter noise and we'll go into dust and scratches. Dust and scratches to remove um, different and luminosity level depend on what radius you specify threshold. It will hold it how much. Usually threshold to the zero and uh, radius it's I look when I can see details like almost paint but I don't see teeny tiny noise details. So that way I think that is right level. Again, that is subjective and based it on the resolution of your photos and image. If I have a bigger face, I probably will increase if portraits close up. But in this case, 21 or 20 pixels should work just good. Um, so next, what we're going to do, it is take our brush. Be sure it says black and white. And we'll go ahead, hold down Alt or Option, click on a mask. It will take now our layers, apply mask black, which is make layer total transparent. So it's invisible. Now by using white brush and we're going to use a 10% opacity at least, flow 80 and smoothing zero, we're going to brush in the smoothness. Um, usually I do this for some skin to create its more painting kind of painter effect because if you've done some paint acrylic oil or whatever, you'll notice with the skin, it's impossible <laughs> to do all this texture in a painting because it will take forever to draw all of these dots. What do you do? You're just painting um, shape over all painting colors and have to take a brush bristles straight forward with a black color and you're just going directly on top to create perception of the texture, but you cannot create um, as much. So the smoothing tool, this one will reduce some of this creating smoother poster or painting a like texture on a skin. So this is what why I'm doing this just trying to simulate. And of course, we'll do on our hands, but on our hands, I need to be careful because you notice when I smooth it. Okay, let's look on the mask. I avoid eyes, mouth, I avoid hair. So this is only applied for the skin or some area where I don't want details. If I do this for the eyebrow, there will be a look not nice eyelashes or eyes. We lose some of the details and it's look very muddy and not good. Same on her hands where it's have a tattoos. I'm trying to avoid, but let's go zoom out. And at this point, you remember it says we have a problem right here. We'll use the exactly the same tool. We'll just pop up a little bit up and we'll just start brushing. What this tool does, it will remove some of the small wrinkling and will create somewhat background painting effect. We don't need to worry too much about um, 
how it will uh, work and other stuff because we're going to add shadows to this so it will go in the dark but i just want a little bit fix okay so let's go ahead look right there it's look fine um a little bit on her dress if we want to adjust okay we can go just same little bit few strokes to smooth out some of those wrinkles you can actually apply quite a bit these techniques also work very well if you have a very dark shadows with a lot of digital noise and you want to fix that digital noise so you can apply to the shadows will it smooth out this effect one thing keep in mind it is smoothing out so what is happening here if we're going to look closer now we have it no noise here and we have a little bit more noise on the background so it does not match it will stand out for that reason we'll have a special la layer afterwards to overlay with the noise to combine those different texture or techniques kind of blend them together uh, make it look uniform okay so we're done smoothing next let's go kind of clean up a little bit here make again a little bit more painting Control shift that e command optional e take create new layer let's go call it hair and we'll change this maybe to green color we'll go to filter now still is and we'll go to oil painting um, nice that in last one is two three years they updated so it's now work on 16 bit before it's only 8 bit function was and our things is set stylization 10 clean style scale 0 1 bristle detail too sometimes i switch bristle details if i need a little bit more i also apply lighting in some case you if you want you can disable lighting um lighting will give it a little bit more depth and dimension without it's look a little bit more flat that i don't need it um and many times when i apply this i want even more have it kind of texturization to this so we'll go to filter um sharpen and we'll go and apply unsharp masks to increase even more to this so let's go bring about 140 150 should work okay for this resolution you can see how it's look funny in some cases and i don't want to apply everywhere so i want to apply two specific elements for this reason we'll do again same thing scroll down alt or option and click on a mask so it will create our black mask which is make this layer transparent now to go back to our brush we'll go use it white brush 10 percent soft again same what we did before now we can go in here we'll use size and we can paint masking out some or masking in some more of this hair you'll notice hair it's clean up, come a little bit cleaner the reason is why look cleaner because if you look on processed hair it will look closer how the camera with noise you'll notice the line going cross hair and along the hair we like to recognize hair as a long so with this tool what it does a painting it's remove some cross hair by the math calculations and creating a long so it's a in some removing digital noise on the cross hair will make it look a little bit cleaner it's all what is about okay same like her brows definitely was drying in but with this tool if we apply it it will add a little bit straight right here you can see already start pop up so it's look a little bit better again be careful to using this and then nice things because we are using masking tool if you've done too much you can go switch to the black color um, instead white and you can go ahead fix that way some can be look too artificial so again be careful how to use it you're the artist watch for the um what do you want to achieve how it's come up um i also like to apply same effect on a artificial flowers so just make them nice and her um horns on the head look a little bit artificial plasticky so by using this tool we kind of can hide and create more a like painting effect like right there hiding some elements and you can see it's become somewhat more arts kind of looking like painting you can try apply this effect to any other elements usually if i have it flowers artificial flowers i will apply same effect there so we're done with this preset leddings now let's go ahead and create our dodge and burn dodge and burn you can do multiple ways you can use it just a clear layer you can use it dodge and burn tools it's more than one way to do this approach my way um, and I'm just a little bit older way how I used to do 
I just create a layer, fill up this layer with a 50% gray normal opacity and set this to the soft light. The reason I can see dodge and burn if I need it. So all I need to do just switch to normal mode instead soft light. This has some benefits, uh, but if you want it, you can even just use clear layer set to the multiply or screen mode and work this way so that's very very many ways to do it um, i would recommend for you just to try find your way how you like it and just stick with this because as long as your workflow work very well why change so right here i'm going to add a little bit more light shadowing to her face okay we'll just add a little bit more details kind of so let's go like right here, darken. The one thing at this point you need to understand that color do nothing to the shape. Okay. It is nice when you have it color, it's add some stuff. It would give you some perspective in using far away because with uh, like if you do landscape and it's far away, then you start losing saturations. You added more, less contrast, less detail. So it's how we determine. But in the current situation, when it is sharpened everything, the color it won't be give it a shape information. What it does, it's just a luminosity. It's just a black and white. That is what producing for us the shape. So by using dodge and burn, we can actually even turn off color if it's distracted for you. And by using just black and white, we can go ahead and add and modify a little bit shape right there so sometimes maybe it will more helpful for you if it's color to distract you can put it black and white just like right there and work a little bit with the shapes the shapes is very interesting because darker usually we look under or far away like in her nose and wider it's closer so we could technically just take a cheek all the way down black and make white like on the side and her face change shape totally because shape in two dimensions will represent by difference black and white. So try to play around, play with different brushes, try to play with different um, intensity. But overall, you can find that you can easy just work this way and it's what i'm doing same um you know how to, you can make a, a little bit slimmer same with the shadows we can do it and the shadows it's not just necessary change subject and other things it's help us to draw attention to specific area and we'll do this in a second right now i'm just uh, adding you remember like right here if we need it going away see what we've done we just created with a shape we created all the way it wasn't before and now we have it all along around so we'll just make a white like right there so we can change shape very easy with this okay if you're using a vicom pen it's maybe it will be a little bit easy i am just using mouse for this and same like right here i can add additional shape here I'm gonna white which is highlights going and it will look out okay maybe you know just a little bit bigger there you go i'll probably redo this just as an example you can see how we change shape of the dress okay so let's go just a little bit darker i don't need it that dramatic to go here but we'll apply it okay general what i'm doing it's applying let's go look on her hands yeah hands look quite a bit flat so what we're going we add a little bit more shadows to the hands in these areas okay switch and add a little bit highlights okay we can we don't need to have it our black and white because if you have a problem you can try it black and white in my case i think the lights will work fine right here for example we have it quite a bit dark and i seem or quite a bit bright so we'll just add shadows to her sleeve just to remove attention again black and white it's not necessary shadows this it's also create the intention because we are used to drawing to brighter area i think this is look okay so next what i want to do it is 
Let's go switch to mallet. Another dodge and burn. And usually I do this to kind of separate. One will be for the object, other one will be general. So we'll go create a new again. We'll go to fill up with 50% gray, exactly the same as we did it. It's global dodge and burn will be. Let's go set to valid and we'll switch to the soft light. Only in this case, I want to apply to my scenery overall. So because it's a bright and other things, it sometimes take attention away from the model. And I want to just to darken a little bit our floor. You remember how I said we'll darken this area. So a little bit coming in. And if it's too bright and does not necessarily work, then you can also do multiply mode, which will create much stronger, almost to absolutely black. Um, I don't think in some cases when you even work this way, it will apply absolute black. However, if you create new layer, just example, and we're going to multiply mode uh, right here. Um, multiply mode will also cost colors, so be careful what you're using. But I will just sample black under table. And then I can also just start adding multiply. Multiply will be strong. How I say before, we can go all the way to the black. And if you prefer, just use it multiply mode for the black and screen for the highlights. You're more than welcome to use this. But it is just another tools to use it. Okay, let's go back to our dodge and burn. And this one, we just have a deep shadows. Okay, because it's affecting my shadows, I'll same set to valid color. On a global dodge and burn, we did a black, so let's go switch to the white. And I just want to add, we also in this point can play, maybe even put it like lights coming on her, like light strike, and we'll just painting them. Okay, right there, so kind of a little bit on her face, around. So right now we start telling story by doing adding light and how the light fall and everything we creating the story because now our telling that something shine on her something else so with the adjustment of the global lighting and everything that is part of the what's happening there so be careful how you use it and just example see what has happened before and now it definitely will focus more on her face. It's now to say she's come from shadows or something, so it will start bringing more interesting to our um, image. Okay, so when we're done here, let's go next things. I want to apply kind of this digital noise to combine everything together. So we'll go create a new layer and uh, let's go crane. We'll leave it as gray. We'll fill up again with 50% gray, but now we'll go to just filters, noise, we'll go to add noise because we need to add. And I found 10% will work just fine in most cases. So click OK and switch this blending mode to soft light. Let's look what's happening now. If we come closer, we don't necessarily, you see, it's kind of like almost all noise added, but it's blending with all our effects. So let's turn it off. And you can see how smooth on the hair, but some other ones. And if it's too strong, one nice thing we have it, it is opacity. So I think it is a little bit too strong. So I want to bring a little bit down, maybe around 50, 60. I think this has worked very well. We can zoom out now and it should very nicely and pleasant keep it together. So, okay, um, this one kind of nice going. I think we're ready to add some color correction to this. and. Uh, we can do color correction. Okay, let's go to delete the black and white layer. We don't need that one. We can use it from Filter Forge or we can use it otherwise. Filter Forge, it is not free applications, but it is provided a lot of free, I forget how many thousands of the free filters you can download it. It's where you can create it. It's what I do. I create my filters there. That is free to use if you like it. Um, I'm not sponsored by Filter Forge. I'm not affiliated with them, but I do use their product for a long time. And it saved me a lot of time because I can show you we'll do correction different way, but usually with Filter Forge, you just go inside, launch this application. Uh, one of those things, I have a lot of tutorials about how to use Filter Forge. And what's happening, you can download it 
free version of filter forge 30 days trial you can go create your own filters and if they become popular which they often do then it's in use then they give you credits and i think it's like only two three credits and you can have it free um filter forge so it is worth it. you can technically get this filter forge for free and maybe i should do a video about how to do this but it would require from you some work so it would require to create something so right here example i will use the phototone i created and phototone is just a adjustments that going between different channels and the vibrance and all stuff and we have it preset so what it does you can see by just simple clicking i can apply those presets and of course when i apply some preset if i don't like it or i like it whatever i can go inside modify some of the effect here i think this one leave it i don't need to use 100 percent but for example okay i like this one if i like it i can go inside and add preset and now it's will remember so next time i can go and click and use it or just try again go back and forward and when you like this one click apply and you can see it saved a lot of time for me instead of doing this um it's take a few seconds till this right here you can see it's applied and uh, depend on your resolution depend on the size it may take a little bit time but usually this one specific filter when i did it's work quite a bit fast okay so right here it applied color if you don't like it or i think it's too strong we definitely can take down opacity and we can play with opacity a little bit so next what i like to do is go add selective color and this is will help me to control each different luminosity layer and color layer so i can actually work with them and i can combine them for example i take a black luminosity i can change right here intensity of this and usually just let's go bring just a little bit uh, brighter and i will put it in a cold so notice right here it's shadows going right so we'll go a little bit four a little bit greenish and a little bit cyanish now we'll go to neutral and neutral is opposite let's go bring opposite a little bit warmer so we'll go a little bit reddish color actually we can do cyan nope i think red will look good again this is non-destructive you can play around you can switch as many times as you want it i think maybe black was a little bit too much so let's go minus one kind of like right there and keep it blue down so again this one one thing we can work with the whites and if you don't see you can move around just see how it's affecting i think a little bit bright on the white and we'll add to one more color uh let's go on the red you don't say any don't uh sometimes you maybe want effect not just the luminosity you maybe want to affect the color so in this case red and you can see what, what's happening we can bright red or take more deeper and then this i want to have it actually deep red so i'm going to luminosity i add more to the black make it darker deeper we can also create more reddish or cyanish and i will go a little bit cyan and let me see a little bit more yellowish so again we're affecting only a red channel in this case her um, magenta her dress magenta we can select and you can preview we can modify so we can make brighter or darker again i'll just add a little bit more to her dress just create this richer kind of depth color um we can change colors let's go a little bit yellowish here and a little bit more reddish to this and magenta so just add a little bit this royal kind of deeper color look to this same things remember you have it your opacity so you can affect one way or another if you don't have filter forge you don't need it so you can just work with one but i think it's add a little bit one thing keep in mind um when you do all these changes be sure these changes you do in small increments because if you do bigger change otherwise you kind of hard to control it i like to create even more of some of this one by one element and it's one by one step small steps that work better okay when we're done all what we need to do now it's click on a title and i'll just for fun have it a very long name and for this one I'll have it, the font. I do create sometimes my logos, put it this one, but many times I just use it simple text and I'm using text, whatever I feel like. 
So in this case, I think the witch style kind of funny will pay a little bit better um, attention to this. And I'm going to set this barely visible. Um, it's up to you what you like to do. Some people put it a very big logo cross. Um, personally, I found it is a little bit distracting because I want to people pay attention to art what I created, not necessarily to my name. Who want it, they will find by the style or other things. Again, it's all personal choice, personal experience, but I'm more interested people pay attention to the art what was created, not to the who was created by. Okay, so right here we have it, our image done and I think it's ready so we can save it and use it. And one thing the question people ask, how to save why your images look very sharp on the media. And uh, sharpness it's always represented by luminosity level, by contrast between white and black. That is what the term as a sharpen. If you want it, be sure we just save it work like this. And next, um, usually I save it size a little bit smaller to post it, but I'll show you how we can sharpen up. So Control Shift Alt E, Command Option Alt E on a Mac, create new one. It just take all visible again layers we created. I'm going to select image, copy, create new out of this paste it okay and we'll going image image size the reason is usually you can do with other I just want to show you all the steps and we'll just go set to 3000 pixels and this is change I usually to do done before 2000 pixels now I'm working with the maximum side of 3000 pixels with 4k monitors it's work very well as other things so we resize this it should be already sharp, but the interesting thing is that we need to add a little bit more sharpness to this. So what I'm going to filter, sharpen, we'll go to unsharp mask, you can do high pass, and we'll just add a little bit, about 20%. So we add artificial sharpness. Sharpness, again, it will represent it by contrast and luminosity levels. So when we've done this, click OK, and now we're ready to save that way you will have a very sharp image on your social media when you post it. Control Shift Alt S or Command Option Alt S will open for us this interface where we can select save for web. The nice things about this because it's showing what is different is and one thing I played around I always have a hard time you can see the original the blacks a little bit more pale kind of and because we're using sRGB type palette, doesn't matter if you're using PNG or JPEG, you lose some of that depth between white and black. So right here you can see it's more crush black kind of look. Okay, but it is nice so you can preview how your image will look. So it does not necessarily look like original, it's a look a little bit different. I'm working on my monitors that is color calibrated, so it's helped me when I go in the print, but it's also showing what is different on that monitor. So I will save in PNG before I usually save with a JPEG, but I notice JPEG give it more and more um, artifacts actually. So I'm more leaning toward PNG. However, with PNG, you will have a higher, bigger size of the file. You need to save it more size than JPEG. JPEG can a little bit better, but I found it's no problem with now media, how much they can upload and everything. So right here, we're ready and let's go just save this one. Okay, so right here is our image, we're done with work, and we can actually take group this type, call it retouching. Okay, and there you go, that was before and after. Actually, before was not necessarily before, because remember, we cropped a little bit, but generally, it's, you can see the image before and image after. Uh, some changes, how I say it's color, just retouching, touch mostly, it's a mood and make a viewer focus on element that you want to them see, which in this case, uh, remove some distraction on the color and lighting and let them more focus on the face and action with lights, what is going on. Thank you for watching this video. If you like it, please subscribe, give us thumbs up, set notification, um, inform you, whatever you, it's will greatly appreciate your support. Um, 
I would highly suggest if you want it, join the Patreon supporters. I will provide a link below. Then you can access to thousands of my video tutorials and many, many gigabytes of the additional um, stuff. I have it like wings, um, clouds, texture, brushes, 3D models. It's a huge, huge, huge collection of assets. You all can access for free or really very deep discount. Um, just become the Patreon. And again, that become Patreon will help me to create more videos, to share my knowledge. It's kind of encouraging when you see people support you. It's very, very encouraging to create more content, to explore and create better, to share your knowledge. Again, thank you for watching videos and hopefully you enjoy it.